Welcome to At Issue. I'm H. Wayne Wilson. Thank you so much for joining us for an important discussion. And that discussion is important because we have an election coming up. Not only the district races in the city of Peoria, but also the at-large races. That's right, there are two unexpired terms. These are two-year terms coming up for two positions. Therefore, there are four candidates running for those two positions. And we have the pleasure of talking to all four of those candidates for the next half hour. Let me introduce to you in the order that they are on the ballot. Zach Euler, who is a realtor in Peoria, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Also with us is John Kelly. John Kelly is a retired financial advisor. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Sid Ruck Regal is a franchisee for restaurants. Thank you for being with us, Sid. Thank you for having us. And also with us is Rob Hanauer. He may appear on the ballot as Robert Hanauer, and he's an attorney in Peoria. Thank you for being with us. Thanks, I'm glad I could be here. Now, uh, we will, uh, I, I introduce them in the order that they're on the ballot, and they will answer questions in that order. Zach will answer the first topic first, and we'll go around, and then we'll continue in that uh, sequence with John going with the second one and Sid the third, etc. This is a conversation, it is not a debate, there is no time limit, but I have asked the candidates to be as concise as possible in their answers. Our first topic, gentlemen, with Caterpillar's decision to not build its headquarters in downtown Peoria, leaving many empty buildings and lots, and with the current office space vacancy rate of 24%, that is double what it was nine years ago in the central business district of Peoria. What can the council do to re revitalize downtown? Zach, you lead. Thank you. Uh, th this is a very complicated and challenging problem and situation and, and time in the city of Peoria and not just as we focus on the downtown revitalization and vacancy and the warehouse district but in the city as a whole we have to be focusing on bringing in new business and that's has to come with an agenda that's focused on how are we going to go out and attract new business and we have to as a, a council as a community focus on being proactive and looking at opportunities, going out and soliciting new business to come in, spending time with developers and business owners to understand what it is that will bring them potentially to Peoria, what it is that's keeping the businesses that we have in Peoria, and how do we continue to sustain that as we look at the challenges that we face in front of us from a, a tax standpoint significantly, the only way we're going to address that is to turn that curve back the other direction. And obviously the announcement with Caterpillar and the announcement recently with Pierre Marquette puts us in a position where we really have to be honed in on this issue and have a policy that opens the door to new business coming in and and whatever aspect it, it takes us down in terms of sitting with each of these different facets and understanding what their challenges are, what changes that we could potentially make to code, make it easier to open up shop here in Peoria because that's what's going to address our vacancy rate and jobs. Same question to John Kelly. Well, <clears throat> we have a, uh, uh, a situation exacerbated by Caterpillar, but it is a situation that existed prior uh, to that announcement as well. Uh, <clears throat> I believe we have a, an economic climate that makes it rather difficult for uh, new investment, for um, that is for people who are already in Peoria, and uh, for a potential new entrant into our uh, economy. I think we need to examine and reform um, many of our uh, uh, building codes, uh, our tax policies, our permitting fees and fines and, and other uh, money raisers for, for City Hall. We need to get our city much more attractive to uh, investment. Um, that I believe would not only help our downtown, uh, but it would help all those businesses in Peoria and help the city generally. We are doing the same things that older northern cities are doing to promote growth and those things don't work there and they don't work here. However, these things are under our control and we can effect those changes and make our city, including our downtown, more attractive to invest in. Sid Ruckwiegel. You know, I don't think any of us are going to forget where we were that day the announcement was made. 
Um, not long after that, I went to Omaha to be able to see how they dealt with ConAgra leaving their downtown. I was able to talk with city leaders about how they kept the momentum that, that they had prior to that going. And I think it's a real question for us. Uh, first off, it takes every one of us to be able to make sure that we are touting and, and pulling in the right direction. Um, we've got too many vacancies, but we need somebody around the, the horseshoe who actually has made those decisions on when to relocate and who's had that redevelopment experience. I'm the only candidate who's had that. Uh, but I think also, too, we have to realize that what we say has a long-term effect way beyond the campaign trail. It's really hard to be on the campaign trail and say that the city is difficult to work with, that we've got problems that we can't overcome, and then that on April 5th, when the election is over, say, hey, please come and relocate here. We've got enough challenges from the state side that we don't need to create those locally as well. Uh, we find that we have, uh, when we talk to businesses that locate here, they find City Hall that is a pleasure to work with compared to other cities. And I think that we need to tout that experience as well. So it, it becomes all of us as a, a key to this driving effort that we have to make sure that we're not working against the overall momentum. We've got a lot of work to do. And Rob Hanauer. Thank you. Uh, one thing I think that we need to do is, like Zach said, we need to sit down with developers. And, and I'm not talking about just a few select developers that the city has over time allowed to do business here, but developers who we have not allowed to do business for whatever reason, or developers that want to do business and see what it is that we can do that would make their life easier in Peoria. Additionally, and most importantly, uh, I, I take you can take two different approaches with drawing business here. You could, you could take the approach that we give them tax breaks and businesses come because it's cost effective to do business here. I take a different approach. I believe business follows talent. For instance, uh, back in late fall last year, Caterpillar actually rented out office space uh, next to Merchandise Mart in Chicago. It was for a tech office and the reason that they did that is they wanted the talent that Chicago could provide. And my position is that to bring business to Peoria and to keep business here, we need to be a community that welcomes, encourages, and tolerates people from all different walks of life. We have a lot of people that come from out of the city, out of the state, and out of the country that go to Bradley University or Robert Morris College or Mid-State or Illinois Central College. We, our, the, the basketball team there, I went to ICC, and the women's basketball team pulls from all over the place. We need to be a, a culture that accepts and tolerates and encourages people from all walks of life. If we give people in those schools a reason to stay in Peoria, we can grow from the ground up. And business will stay here. Uh, Caterpillar won't leave because the talent is here. And businesses like Caterpillar will come. So the key is to become a welcome and tolerant community for people from all walks of life. Thank you. Our next topic will be first answered by John Kelly, and it is, with the closing of Gordman's, another sign that sales tax revenue will decline, and the growing pension obligation that the city has, and the drop in gaming income, and the possible property tax freeze that the state may impose, what options do you support for a balanced budget and still provide necessary services? Well, <clears throat> first of all, the, the closing of uh, the closing of retailers, et cetera, highlights the fact that we are very, very dependent in our city on taxes that punish commerce. And it is not surprising oftentimes, not so much with Gordman's, but with, with other retailers, that, that they often find Peoria a hostile place to, to do business. We've got the highest sales taxes in the state. We're very, de very dependent upon sales taxes, which punish commerce. A restructuring of our tax system, moving it off of the punishment scale, moving it down into a scale that's hopefully more neutral or perhaps more encouraging, uh, I think will aid our city greatly and set us apart within this state as the place to go if you want to invest capital, the place to go if you want to uh, attract high wage middle management people or uh, 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 middle skilled people, etc. We don't do this right now. We're very dependent upon sales tax and I think it's a great, great error. The same issue to Sid Ruckwiegel. You know, if we look back 30 years ago, 
we had a much higher level of sales tax dollars being able to come in. And we've lost that, obviously, um, online sales. And uh, it's a very important key issue to make sure that we keep that sales tax base here. One of the first things we can do is make sure that we grow our residential base. And that is by fostering those businesses that can actually um, create jobs and be able to grow the actual base that's spending here. The second piece is we've got to set priorities around the council. And we need to make sure that those priorities are first funded. And those are public, public safety, infrastructure, those key day-to-day -day, um, pieces that we need to focus on as a city. Um, it's, a, it's a decision between wants and needs. And I think that we, make, we need to make for sure that we are, are supporting and prioritizing in our budget cycle those definite needs, which are public safety and infrastructure. Uh, we need to do the business of the city first, and then those extras um, those, those pretty things come after that. Rob Hanauer. I would say that when we look at our budget, we need to look at uh, not just you know a big picture, but get in depth at each line item and see what the total cost is to identify any inefficiencies that we have. Also, I would say that uh, when we're when we're looking at it, too often in times we have consultants come into the city and they'll you know they'll give us a consulting fee and they'll charge us whatever they think that we'll pay. And they think that the people on city council are rum dums or stupid and they'll just pay whatever. And taxpayers get gouged. I believe that there's a lot of cost savings that can be done by just uh, auditing the fees or the charges that we get in consulting agreements. And uh, that, that right there I think would at least be a start. Thank you. And to the realtor in our group, Zach Euler. Thank you. Um, Gordman's is, is really just a signal to some of the other challenges that we have faced. And you know, recently we faced the same thing with Macy's and we've had other retailers in our community that have um, either moved out or closed up shop here. And when you look at that, it really comes down to a, a disposable income issue and the citizens in our community don't have the disposable income to spend at these retailers and that puts us in a situation where they can't find this to be an operable place to do business. And so as Sid mentioned, when it comes to the improving the neighborhood side of it, that's really a key piece of this argument and especially from a realtor standpoint is that we have to have thriving neighborhoods and a place that people want to live and shop and do business as well. And then also referencing back to the first question as it relates to bringing in businesses into the vacancies, an agenda that really focuses on priorities related to business, what it is that we need to do to bring new business in, how we're going to keep the businesses that we have, because behind those is jobs and we need sustainable jobs to have sustainable income to spend at retailers and restaurants and some of the other facets of our community that drive our sales tax revenue and so we really have to have a holistic approach to the neighborhood and the business sector of this community to address those challenges. Our next topic will first be answered by Sid Ruckriegel and it is the high unemployment rate for minorities in Peoria and in particular 61605 where the overall rate is approaching 25 percent. What can the city do to improve the economic opportunity for minorities, Sid. There's lots of opportunities for the city to get involved. Uh, one thing is we need to be a leader in the fact of bringing together various partners that can be working together on job training skills, um, reentry programs, and then we also need to be working on locating uh, livable wage jobs within 61605, ones that are easily accessible, easily uh, to transport to. And part of that is we've got to be able to go out and market our city to be able to have that. Part of it is growing the talent base. Um, we need to be able to make sure that we've got job training um, on site or close into the area <coughs> and uh, tie some of those contracts of public investment that we are making in that area directly to those residents that, that live there so that we're investing our dollars back into creating the jobs right there. Uh, then the other part too is we need to make for sure that we can tide the stem so that we can have a labor pool that has the skills necessary, which means that while obviously we're not in the job of education, we can be a help and a support to those on the school board and uh, Peoria Public Schools. 
And I think that w what we need to really look at is a holistic approach where the city becomes a, a leader with other social agencies, social groups. Um, we, we take those plans that we've had far too many of on the shelf and pull them off, dust them off, look for good ideas, and really get to work on creating jobs. Rob Hanauer. I would say that I agree with Sid. We need to focus on the schools. If we improve the educational performance of, of children, then they're going to be more inclined and more capable employer, employees. I think that that starts with uh, summertime youth outreach opportunities for at-risk youth, giving kids something constructive to do as opposed to destructive to do. Uh, when you teach people uh, at a young age how to handle themselves and promote that sort of civic responsibility that goes with having a job, that's where it starts. I also would say that we need to focus on bringing back the Equal Opportunity Office. Uh, it used to have teeth to it, now it doesn't for any employer over 15 employees and, and various other restrictions. I would also say that we should consider having, well with, with regard to the Equal Opportunity Office, have p anything that has a public contract attached to it require compliance with the Equal Opportunity Office. Also, I would say that we should consider hiring based on zip code uh, if businesses want to locate here or if there's a public contract require in the contract, not by race or religion or gender, but by, by zip code. It's a way of creating jobs for those who otherwise don't have it. I think there's also a wealth of untapped opportunity in the green solution to the CSO problem, the combined sewer overflow problem. A lot of the green jobs pay livable wages for people who otherwise don't have an educational background. And to Zach Euler. One of the things that I think that gets missed in the community is a real good understanding of the challenges that our neighbors in Peoria experience in different parts of the city. And, and one of those is we talk about 61605 is transportation. And it's great to have jobs, but if they're not in relation to where the individuals are that live in the city that need those jobs, it doesn't help them. And so we have to be focused on how do we get jobs into the neighborhood so that they can get to the people that may not have the resources to drive to work or potentially afford a bus pass to get to work. And that's one of the things that you understand as you get involved in these parts of the community and you spend time door to door and really talking with people about what their challenges are is what, what is it that they need from us to actually start to address those and a big part of that is jobs that are local to them and it's not just about jobs but it's also about education and bringing that education piece to their neighborhood as well no matter what part of the city you live in or what background you have having an opportunity to go to a training class to understand you know how to even apply to go to college where do you even begin with that and those are things that we can really work with our social service and nonprofit agencies locally and focus as a whole on how do we give a complete service to different parts of the community rather than just certain other parts and to John Kelly um, <clears throat> the things discussed around this table uh, this city has been doing for 30 or 40 years and they've been doing these things with all of the best intentions and what is the result 61605 is continuing to be depopulated its assessed value continues to drop these things however well intentioned they are are not working growth works if we embark upon a growth strategy within our city, we may begin to resemble those other growth cities in the country where these problems are lessened and lessened and lessened. These are, these are cities that don't seem to have these, these continuing intractable problems. So this is the direction I would go. I don't, I don't disagree really with anything that's been said, but I must say, we've been trying this stuff for, for a long time, and it hasn't worked. We have one more topic to throw out. I want you to keep be very brief, 30 seconds or less on this. There's a June 30th deadline for due diligence on the proposed River Trail Apartments, by which time the city needs National Park Service okay on the parkland trade, and developer Desmond Curran needs financing approved. If that doesn't occur by June 30th, the city must extend the current agreement. 
Will you vote to extend that agreement? And we start first with Zach. Or we, I'm sorry, with Rob. My mistake, no, Rob. No, it's okay. Uh, I would let it die on the vine. I, I believe that there are adequate jobs to protect the unions uh, in the warehouse district. I don't believe that the, I went to the Gar Hall event the Save Riverfront Park event. I, I want to save Riverfront Park. I don't want to lose wi Riverfront Park, uh, so I'd let it die. And now to Zach. We're operating in a very different climate than when this project started, and now we're at a point where a lot of resources from the city and the community have gone into furthering this along. And I think with the changes that have happened with Caterpillar and downtown, the high number of vacancies that are downtown, I think that there are plenty of opportunities to address housing, and so we need to not vote to extend this project. And to John Kelly. Uh, I'm opposed to the project as well. <clears throat> I think that uh, uh, our riverfront park, as perhaps it's, it's spotty at this time, but we should continue to keep working on a riverfront park for quality of life issues, et cetera. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not at all uh, uh, in favor of this development. And Sid Buckwinkle. You know, with all the changes that we've seen just in the past couple of, uh, couple of weeks, and I think that we see right now going on, I think uh, we've got to look very hard at whether this project actually does continue. I, I think it has uh, been in front of us for a number of years as far as the city, and I think recent economic changes have uh, probably changed the, uh, the opinion of, of this moving forward from the council. And thank you for addressing the topics that I've presented. We now have about 45 seconds for each of you to have a closing statement. And we'll start once again with Zach Euler. I want to thank you again for having us and for all of you at home that are watching our program today. Uh, one of the things that really wasn't touched on uh, significantly is neighborhoods. We focused a lot on business and jobs, but we've got a lot of declining neighborhoods that need attention. We need to get involved and ha be hands-on with addressing many of those challenges with the taxable value of the homes deteriorating, you've got blight in the neighborhoods, crime has increased, and it's going to take a council that's really focused and hands-on, and as an at-large member, I'm definitely guaranteeing that I will be working closely with the, the uh, district council members and trying to address neighborhood issues so that we can turn that tide around because that's going to be one of the areas that also assists in dealing with our budget challenges. So I humbly ask for your vote April 4th if uh, those are some of the concerns that relate to you and appreciate your time. John Kelly. I would just say that um, <clears throat> The status quo with frills around it is still the status quo, and the status quo is not serving our city or our citizens. Uh, new ideas, I think, are necessary, and these ideas have been proven in other places, and they've been proven also, to a certain extent, in Peoria. So if people want to embark on some of these newer ideas that promote real growth in our city, that tends to eliminate a lot of these other problems, then I would ask for people's vote on April 4th. Thank you. And Sid Ruckriegel? You know, I think that uh, the decision really needs to be made about uh, what we see here. Everything comes down to two things. One is job creation. And I'm the only candidate who actually has the experience of creating jobs and to be able to locate jobs in areas where they're needed. Uh, the second part that I think needs to be really evaluated is um, the experience level of us as a fabric of a city. Uh, for 25 years I've been involved in neighborhoods and, and community activities. It's not something that uh, I've started because I'm now seeking office. And I think that experience level coming onto the council is really what is needed, especially time of constraining budgets and us having to build relationships to really move the city forward. And I think that's the thing that sets myself apart. Experience in actual job creation and working with neighborhoods and other groups to be able to get a better outcome. And to Rob Hanauer. Thank you. Uh, H, I want to thank you for having all of us on there. I want to thank the viewing audience for, for watching. You know, I, I really have never run for anything other than a track team or a cross country team. So, you know, when I first started running, uh, I was at, I think the environmental forum was the first forum we had, and I caught some people off guard when I did this, but I want to be accessible. That's all right. I keep hitting myself. <laughs> I want to be accessible. And uh, to do so, I think that I need to have a direct line of communication with people who want to talk to me. So I give my number out to everybody. And if people want to call me, my number is 309-635-0255.
Again, 309-635-0255. I'll answer, I'll, I'll respond to text, emails. I want to be accessible all the time. I've been getting calls at one in the morning. I still respond. Uh, so I hope that people will consider me on April 4th. I'm something different than what we've seen in the past. Thank you. And let me say at this point that I thank all four of you for stepping you. forward and wanting to serve the community. It is not a, an easy task. I appreciate all four of you. The best of luck to each of you in equal amounts. Thank you very much. <laughs> and let me say, let me say thank you, uh, first of all, to Zach Euler and Sid Ruckriegel. Thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you for having and us. And likewise you, to Rob Hanauer thank and you. to John Kelly. Thank you for joining us on At Issue. Thank you. And next week, we'll be back with another edition of At Issue. This time, we're going to go to the top. I mean the mayor, mayoral race. It will be Corey Thomas and Jim Artis here in the studio next time on At Issue. We'll see you then.